Thursday, folks. Let's talk to the head of Young Voices UK, Jason Reed. Uh, good evening, Jason. Good evening, Kevin. Uh, we did get conned, didn't we, uh, by a government, uh, yet another government that's scared not to throw loads of money at the NHS. We ought to be sorting out the NHS, but all uh, successive governments ever do is go, here's some more money, here's some more money. So uh, we heard Sajid Javid today at the Downing Street press conference uh, stressing uh, that most of this money that's going to be raised from the national in insurance increased contributions will go straight into the NHS uh, the black hole of the NHS money pit to sort out the backlog and they won't sort out the backlog uh, we need a government with the guts to confront the fact that our NHS is sick at heart it needs serious reform it needs economic reform it needs organized organizational reform and we need to confront the fact that the way we fund it might not be adequate uh, would you agree absolutely right yeah the nhs something like the nhs has the potential to grow and grow and if we let it it could become responsible for a hundred percent of our gdp there's no ceiling on the amount of money we can put into the NHS. And we put all this money in more and more and more every year in all these different creative ways. And we never seem to get anything in return. The outcomes that we get from the NHS don't go up. In fact, um, some of the NHS outcomes are some of the worst ones in the, in the Western world for uh, recovery rates from many different diseases. We do all these different things in order to protect the NHS. That's obviously a slogan we've oh, heard. God, a lot. I'm so sick of that <laughs> phrase. Well, yeah, well, you <laughs> know, exactly. I mean, to, just to interrupt you for a second, you know, it's not my job to protect the NHS. I pay for the NHS. You pay for the NHS. Taxpayers pay for the NHS. It is the NHS's job to protect us. Precisely. Yeah, the NHS has been elevated to the level of this sacred cow. It's sacrosanct, and we need to do everything we can to protect it. But we've lost sight of forget the long-term future, we've lost sight of the immediate future. The NHS should be there, as you say, to protect us. It's a service that is being provided to us. It's not something for us to safeguard at great cost, especially in this way, with a, with a new tax that's going to uh, hit the poor harder than anyone else. Um, obviously, over the last 18 months, we've had to give up our freedoms in order to, to protect the NHS. There it is again. <laughs> and we have, we're seeing all these, all these new nanny state rules are coming in again in order to protect the NHS. Um, because we're all too fat and we all smoke too much and all these different things that we need to do to make sure that we never have to use the NHS, which raises the question, why do we pay for it? Exactly. What's, what's the point of it just if because, we're not allowed to yeah, use it? Just because you're sick, you shouldn't go running to the NHS. I mean, that kind of is uh, the ethos. And don't forget, Jason, that what we saw today was not, oh, uh, here's some new funding uh, for the NHS. It was extra money. It gets more than 200 billion quid a year anyway. And what uh, they uh, purported or concocted up today uh, was a, a method, a kind of a bit of sophistry uh, to con us saying, oh, this is about social care. It wasn't. It was a way of giving yet more money to the NHS because all the NHS ever does is say we haven't got enough money. No, no, no. What you've got, NHS, is you've got too many six-figure salary middle managers who don't do anything medical for a kickoff. Uh, you have a terrible organisation. You are economically inefficient. Uh, so with £200 billion a year, it could be a great health service, but it is a disorganised basket case i completely agree yeah the ruse didn't last very long did it with uh, telling us that it was going to be to pay for social care it didn't keep it up for very long and as you say it will go directly this money will go directly into the pockets of all those high paid uh, executives meanwhile we have all those nurses and doctors on the front line who are giving their all in order to be able to uh, protect us and keep us healthy and safe and all this money is just being eaten up by those at the at the top of the chain and we're not seeing any of it the actual front line of the nhs won't see any of it and i'll tell you something else i'm going to make a prediction now okay so mark the uh, mark this on the calendar in 2024 we will see campaign posters from the tories saying national insurance is at exactly the same rate as it was in 2019 of course not mentioning the fact that we had a national insurance rise which then was uh, put to one side and put in this form of a new social care tax it's just finding all these 
new creative ways to tax us more and more, to take more money out of the pockets of hardworking taxpayers and put it into the pockets of high paid bureaucrats in Whitehall. I mean, to sum up what we saw today, we saw uh, yet more political cowardice in terms of the NHS. In fairness to Boris and the gang, they're just the latest set of politicians who are absolutely terrified uh, to confront uh, the realities of the NHS. And rather than uh, do what they ought to do, which is a root and branch uh, reorganisation Uh, a root and branch investigation into everything that is wrong about this profligate, inefficient uh, organisation called the NHS. Uh, Instead of doing that, they did what what politicians always do. They basically go, uh, here's here's 12 billion, off you go, off you go. Uh, Let's not talk about this. Uh, And this plays into... Uh, the weird veneration that this nation has for our mediocre health service. We call it our amazing NHS. We call it the envy of the world. It's not the envy of the world. It's not a particularly good health service. Why do we worship it, Jason? We worship it because it's, it's the natural response to what we've seen over the last few decades, which is that at every single election, the left, the Labour Party in particular, is guilty of it. Um, is telling us that the NHS is going to be sold off and that the Tory party is just itching to private. Yeah, I it. wish. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, in, in 2019, the, the line, of course, was that Donald Trump was going to buy it. I don't know why Donald Trump would even want to yeah, buy yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's Donald Trump's like quite a good thing. businessman. Why would he want to buy that useless organisation? Exactly, exactly. And the best response that the Tory party has come up in response to that is, no, we love the NHS. Look how much money we're giving to it. And so that's the, re- that's the result is when we have years and years of conservative government, we just have years and years of the government throwing more and more money at it just to prove how much they love it and to prove that they don't want, to, they don't want us all to die, which is the implication of the Labour Party every election with that prediction that's never come true and, and never will come true. Yeah, if you listened in Parliament today, uh, to be fair to the Tories, uh, you know, the t- terror of the NHS uh, or of in any way criticising the NHS uh, is common to all the parties. So if you listen to Keir Starmer today, he was very, very uh, muted on the subject of the NHS. Uh, because he's scared of it as well. They're all scared to confront the fact that our NHS is a basket case. Uh, 200, there's no organisation needs more than £200 billion a year. And uh, on £200 billion a year, uh, there should be no case for saying we need £12 billion more. And yet that's what's happened today. Uh, I want to bring you on to another area of political cowardice. Uh, which Sajid Javid has showed some signs of bravery, but I haven't seen it actually happen yet. Uh, he said uh, towards the end of last week uh, that he was going to make, like in care homes, uh, double vaccination uh, compulsory for all NHS staff. Uh, there's a problem with that. I mean, it seems to make sense to me. I'm not sure that I'd want a surgeon looming over me, fishing around inside me uh, if he was riddled with COVID. Uh, so uh, he, Sajid Javid said, right, we're going to do the same for the care as we did with the care homes. Uh, I haven't seen that coming in yet, and I'll tell you why. Uh, in some of the hospitals in the north in particular, they think a quarter of the staff have refused the vaccine, one in four. Uh, and uh, there were estimations, admittedly a few months back, that as many as 200,000 NHS staff had refused the jab. Uh, I don't think that situation has uh, especially improved. Uh, so if Cav- Sajid Javid does as he says, and he says if you, if you haven't got a double jab, you can't work at the NHS. Uh, if, for example, 200,000 people had to leave their jobs, the entire NHS would grind to a halt. Weird situation, wouldn't you say? A very odd situation. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense at all. And I've got to the point where I don't trust anything the government says when it comes to COVID, when it comes to vaccines or vaccine passports. We had a situation over the weekend where the vaccines minister Nadim Zahawi was saying a completely different thing on the radio than he said on the TV half an hour earlier. We've got to the point where this government has lost all trust. It's lost all credibility. I've got no idea what Sajid Javid actually will do um, with this situation. You can obviously, as you say, you can understand the fact that we want. Uh, we want carers and we want doctors to be to be vaccinated. My mum works in a care home. She got the COVID vaccine as soon as she was offered it, which was very early on. But at the same time, we've got to find an appropriate balance between uh, not, as you say, sending a load of people home from their jobs and leaving the NHS in a whole new crisis. Although the solution to that would probably just be another 
12 million pound payment just to tide us over for that one as well exactly and uh, there were stories in the papers uh, i can't verify them but uh, but they were written in respectable papers like the times and the uh, telegraph uh, saying that uh, care home staff who've been losing their jobs because they refuse to get uh, the vaccination uh, have been uh, waltzing straight into jobs at the nhs where they don't need the vaccination uh, which pretty much sums up the um, swirling mass of insanity that we seem to live in at the moment exactly i mean you would think that even when a government has abandoned its morals, the least it could do would be to have some kind of consistent policy uh, across the different sectors so that you don't have things like that happening. Um, obviously, it shouldn't be the case that uh, if you're unvaccinated and it's totally wrong to work in a care home, that you're then able to work in a hospital. It, it doesn't make any sense at all. And it just goes to show that the sheer lack of uh, basic competency that we're seeing at the top levels of government, which links back into what we were saying earlier about just throwing money at problems and not thinking any more deeply about knotty policy problems and how to solve them, because they're not worried about what the situation is going to be in 15, 20, 25 years time, because at that point, they won't be working in politics anymore. They'll be raking it in in the private sector and it'll be someone else's problem. So all they care about is being seen to take action in the immediate future and the rest of us can clear up the mess later on. Yeah, Boris will probably be writing more books about his uh, political hero, Winston Churchill, uh, with whom he has absolutely no similarities whatsoever. Uh, Jason, uh, you're going to come back and talk to us on a regular basis, and I'm very pleased about that. It was great to talk to you tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, Jason Reid, uh, from the head of, he's the head of the Young Voices UK organisation, is going to be a regular on this show because he talks a lot of sense, if you ask me. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan, and this is Talk Radio. Online, on DAB, and on the Talk Radio app. Talk Radio.